What would you do to accompany the kind of custodial sentences? Like, yes, I mean, I think, you mean in prison? Um, yeah, in terms of kind of getting people away from those choices. Then, yes, but... well, I think, I think it's all the things I've just mentioned, really. Mm. Uh, but, but, but also, I think that too often in prison, uh, people are just left there. Mm. And I think we need to do far more, and it's one of the things that Nick Herbert, the Shadow Justice Secretary, has been talking about. We need to do far more to make sure that as a result of their experiences in prison, people don't want to go back there when they come out. And that's not about uh, tough discipline, although that may have a role. It's actually about the the learning uh, and opportunities for improvement that you have in prison. And you're not just thrown in and the key is turned and that's it. So rehabilitation as well? Is rehabilitation, I think, is enormously important. And uh, I'm quite certain, uh, although having recently visited Birmingham prison, uh, uh, I think they're doing quite a lot of good things there. Um, I'm absolutely certain that rehabilitation is incredibly important and should be intensified far more than it is at the moment. Um, I'm Ranja, I'm 18 years old. I was just wondering, like you were saying, uh, we're extending sentences about people with knife crime and things like that into prison and putting them into prison for longer. The thing is there's so much overcrowding in prisons right now. Yeah, wouldn't it be like more effective to reintroduce some like, edge or policies like national service and things like that? Well, it's a very, it's an interesting point. I mean, we have already said David Cameron has announced uh, a plan to uh, enable people to be part of a sort of civil national service, as it were, from the age of sixteen, which we will try to introduce when we and when and if we win the election. Um, and I think that's a very good way of doing it. I think bringing national service back is very unlikely. The army. Uh, the military don't like it because just at the point where you've trained someone up, they, they leave. Um, and so there will be no support for it, I think, from the military. Uh, but I think that David Cameron's alternative uh, is a good one with this sort of principle of civil national service. Um, in terms of uh, the number of people who are in prison, prison building should match the criminal justice system. The criminal justice system should not be made to match the availability of prison spaces. And therefore, one of the things we're critical about the government is that they haven't uh, kept a proper prison building uh, program in place. So there are inadequate uh, places. And in a number of circumstances, the judiciary, either directly or indirectly, have been encouraged by the, uh, the government, by the Lord Chancellor's Department, by the Just Department of Justice, you know, to keep people out of prison if they possibly can. I think that's quite wrong. I think that we in Parliament make the law about uh, who should go to prison and who shouldn't, what the penalties should be for crimes. And then it's up to judges to uh, assess and judge cases on the basis of the law that's on the statute books. And I think it's sort of nod and a wink to magistrates and so forth because of overcrowding. It's the tail wagging the dog and not the dog you know, behaving in a proper and responsible way. You talked about the idea of national civil service. Can I just get a show of hands about who would sort of be interested in that sort of thing? You know, would, is this something that you would consider? Um, so, if that's something that you'd be into, could you raise your hands, please? If you think it's a good idea. What is national <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's an opportunity to serve in your community and in your country that would be organised uh, on a national uh, basis. Um, and uh, I think it would be a very, very good thing to make available to people. Okay, so given that you've been told that, <laughs> do you think it would be a good idea? Yeah, there's a lot more now, yes. Okay, so quite a few. Over a third, I'd say, yeah. Okay, so there's one, one last question over yeah. here, please. Hello, my name's uh, Neil Nathwani, I'm 17 years old. Um, got a quick question. Abbey College has students from far as Malaysia, Vietnam, Kazakhstan. How important is the education as a development tool and how is Britain contributing towards it? Well... Education is a the key issue in development because if you don't have any form of basic education, your life chances are hobbled from the beginning. Here and in Africa, wherever, wherever you look, education is absolutely critical. And around the world today, there are still 75 million kids who don't have a school to go to and don't go to school. And uh, it's one of the Millennium Development Goals, uh, primary schooling, and it's incredibly important. 
Uh, and we understand that and we would do everything we can to make sure that that Millennium Development Goal is, is hit. And that's not about a one-size-fits-all state system of education necessarily. I was very struck in a slum I visited in Bangladesh that although people are incredibly poor, they don't send their children to the state school. They actually send them to a private school which exists for slum children there. And having a bit of variety, promoting education, not necessarily a one, one particular type of education, I think is enormously important. And we would continue to do everything we can in the countries that we help to try and use our taxpayers' money effectively to deliver universal education. Uh, so it would be very, very important to us, and it's a very important issue, and it's one where we're determined to extend choice and opportunity as widely as we possibly can and as quickly as we can so that no child goes without that. Great. Well, that's all we've got time for today. But thank you very much. We've all enjoyed this discussion. It's a great pleasure. Thank you very much.